Yes, Primetime Invest gets on um, during the week. Uh, I mean, it's like, um, did you watch it, both of you? Did you see it? Mm. Mm. It was shocking stuff. I mean, uh, you don't even need to repeat what happened to one dog in one scene, but like a few days on, it's even hard to forget out in China. We, and Irish dogs are ending up there and they shouldn't be, was part of the story. But ultimately, there was talk of the fact that there's overbreeding going on by a thousand percent in search for the fastest dog around. A dog only races, a greyhound only races for seven months and then frankly it's it's past its best and it's what happens to the excess numbers of greyhounds produced and the uh, cold answer to that is 6,000 a year are killed. Mm. Not always in great circumstances either which was part of the documentary. It was on for over an hour and it's well worth checking out. And um, there's been fallout that's in the papers today. There isn't much in the sports section. I was a bit surprised by that. Mm. I thought, given the timing of it, you know, midway during the week, there was enough time maybe to do something. Yeah, it's more than news. Mm. But it also... Maybe it is more of a news story. I think it shows as well, there's a a snobbery often uh, around stories. There's been a huge reaction to this since winter prime time, but... As Neil well as well aware, the Sun did this a long time ago. It was roughly ten years ago yeah. they first started doing stuff on this, and I've seen this with the Star over the years that we covered stories of broken stories in both sport and news, and nothing comes off them. There's no reaction, and then RT pick up on it or the Irish Times, whoever, and suddenly there's a reaction. Like, uh, and it's very frustrating when you're just. Uh, Put in this ghetto where uh, you're not taken seriously, but I think like it's this just is platform. A, like yeah, I, I first saw it on the news at one. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. On TV, we both did actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're but RT, that's what I mean. But it's gonna, an RT gonna, story. Going to reach more people. Yeah, yeah. No, problem. of course, you know, like TV, TV has that impact. But uh, you know, there was a lot of work. It's like the FAI story. In fairness, going back to it, like Mark Ty did brilliant work. But lo- like loads of journalists have been writing about the FAI for years. Mm-hmm. They just didn't have. The market some of the information out there that you know, he, 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 like credit card bills, etc. That people didn't have access to, but it's not like everybody had been ignoring stuff that was going on in the FAI. But I think this raises a broader thing of both greyhound racing and horse racing. And that I think those industries could be looked into closer in Ireland. They get a lot of state funding. There's been a lot of allegations and proven cases of doping, of fixing. Um, there's been people taken to the Labour Court over the treatment of staff, have been paid paid under the minimum wa- wages and doing way over uh, the, the the supposed uh, the allowed hours. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but it's treated like with kid gloves. All we ever hear is racing is great, it's a great sport and it's great for Ireland. It provides jobs, but I think really the, the, both horse racing and greyhound racing need to be looked into very closely here. Yeah, the the most annoying thing for me for the, the fallout from all of this is that on Friday. The Greyhound Board, the Irish Greyhound Board, announced plans to make it illegal to to euthanise a greyhound by any means other than a vet. Okay, yes. as if it's news to them that this has been happening. Where Gary Manelia, a, a, a journalist in the Irish Sun, he can't. He went down to Wexford to this guy Larry Earl ten years ago, two thousand and nine. So long ago that pages were in black and white then, and it was as simple a case of ring up and say I've got a dog here and bring it down. We'll shoot it for you, tenor. It's gone up to 20, 20 euro since. Um, so they've known since 2009, at least, and did nothing about it. And it took a television programme um, f- for this to come out. Well, now, Barry's Tea, 36,000 people have signed an online petition urging Barry's Tea to, to withdraw their sponsorship of the races at Curraheen in Cork. And sorry, and Neil, it, what paper is this in? This is in the Irish Sun. Sun, yeah. Sorry, today. In the news section. Yeah, in the news section. So they say, yeah, they're concerned by revelations and they've issued a statement saying, uh, uh, we're very concerned the revelations highlighted in the RT Investigates programme. We're currently reviewing our sponsorship of the annual race in Curraheen. And of course, they're going to be under pressure. 36,000 is a lot of signatures. Yeah, yeah. It is true your point about the inaction for so long. Even this report, this confidential report, which was refused under Freedom of Information Act originally and then ultimately RT got their hands on it one way or another, yeah. that contained the inf- all the information they needed. Mm-hmm. So why didn't they come out when this confidential report was commissioned for over 100 grand and clearly told them 6,000 are going missing a year? Yeah. This is an issue. Why not come out and reiterate this is not how you euthanise a greyhound mm-hmm. and we just want to get ahead of this story. Get ahead story. of the story, yeah, which nobody ever seems to do in this country. So. No. It's like the FAI would just, if I was them now, I'd be releasing all the other all the other bad news, just get it out there, just say those days are gone, we're not like that anymore. Mm. But um, 
Yeah, as actually, I had forgotten all about this. I, I put in a freedom of information request to uh, the Greyhound Board following the sale of uh, the, the stadium there in Harold's Cross a couple of years ago because, you know, there was some, some questions that needed to be answered and, and, and it was blocked. And I, I think I appealed it and I think it was blocked again and I, I kind of gave up on it. But yeah, I do think more questions need to be asked about mm. Um, having said that, there's, there's uh, politicians coming out asking for the 16 million of funding to be withdrawn. I wouldn't do that just <coughs> yet because obviously there's a lot of good people in Greyhound Racing as well and I, I don't think everybody should be punished, but the bad ones should be rooted out for sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 17 million a year the industry receives and greyhounds are classed as farm animals as opposed to dogs, which was something I wasn't aware of either. Mm. You know, a strange situation, but that's one of the reasons with the funding. I think there was somebody Sport, in the, Sport so Ireland get 60 odd million to divide among 60 sports and yeah, yeah. Greyhound Racing is pulling in 17 million which is quite something. 2.7 yeah. for the FAI. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Big well, it's a major there. employer I think that's um, both horse racing and Greyhound Racing. I think that's why they've always got a lot of state funding but I know a lot of other sports have always been very annoyed at the amount of funding they get that mm. they feel is preferential and a lot of politicians are quite closely linked yeah, to well racing connected. as well. Yeah. Um, I think there was somebody in the Sunday Tribune years ago who, who had no time for racing and used to argue they should be in the agriculture section rather than sports. So right. maybe they have grounding there when their build is depicted as agricultural animals, you said. <laughs>